A baby bear found itself alone and stranded by a river, facing a desperate struggle for survival. Separated from its mother and in a weakened state, the young American black bear was in urgent need of help and trust in order to be saved. The situation puzzled Nala Chucky River guides in Irwin, Tennessee, as bears typically retreat deeper into the forest upon encountering humans along the river. However, this particular five-month-old cub remained in the same location for several days, visibly malnourished and displaying signs of distress. Matt Moses, the owner of USA Raft, received reports from his guides about the bear and the dilemma they faced. With a strong determination to prevent the bear from perishing by the riverside, Moses and the other guides remained vigilant, hoping for the return of the mother bear. However, as each day passed, the cub grew thinner, and there was still no sign of its mother. Surprisingly, despite its weakening state, the cub's curiosity about the river guides grew stronger. In response, the guides affectionately named the cub Noli, after the river. Gradually, Nali stopped climbing trees whenever the guides passed by, opting instead to wade closer to the river's edge, displaying a growing interest in their presence. Day by day, as the rafters approached the riverbank, Nali's curiosity and hunger overcame any innate fears it may have had towards humans. Initially, it would cautiously walk toward the guides, and eventually, it even swam towards one of the rafts. On one occasion, a river guide named Danny Allen from a different rafting company happened to pull over, and to Moses' astonishment, the desperate bear climbed right into the raft. Moses expressed his disbelief, stating that although bear sightings were not uncommon, he had never witnessed anything like this before. It was the first time he had heard of a bear willingly getting into a raft. It's worth noting that while grizzly bears are known for their formidable reputation in North America, black bears are generally considered less aggressive. When a black bear does attack, it is often a defensive response, especially when protecting its cubs. Generally, black bears tend to ignore or avoid human interactions. This behavior is what made the young cub's leap of faith truly remarkable. Once safely back on solid ground at Moses's company property, the bear rescue team reached out to the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, who promptly arrived to transport the cub to the Appalachian Bear Rescue ABR, in Townsend. Established in 1996, this nonprofit organization focuses on rehabilitating orphaned and injured black bears, preparing them for eventual release back into the wild. Upon Nolly's arrival, the ABR team took her to the University of Tennessee Veterinary School for a thorough examination. During the checkup, veterinarians discovered that Nolly was severely dehydrated and possibly suffering from heatstroke. After receiving medical observation and hydrating with ample fluids, Nolly began regaining her strength. Soon enough, she became healthy enough to return to the rehabilitation center at ABR, where she would have the opportunity to integrate with other bears. Remarkably, within a matter of days, Nolly's appetite and overall health showed significant improvement. According to Dana Dodd, the board president of the rescue center, Nolly showed a preference for grapes and applesauce, which were beneficial due to their high water content. Dodd emphasized that although Nolly still had much growing up to do before being ready for the wild, it was important to ensure her survival. Typically, Cubs stay with their mothers until they reach around 16 months of age. However, to increase Nolly's chances of survival, the rehabilitation center aimed to keep her in their care until she reached a minimum weight of 50 pounds. At this weight, even though Nolly would still be quite young, studies have indicated that she would have a good chance of survival, particularly in warmer climates like the southeast where food sources such as acorns are abundant. Fortunately, Nolly exceeded expectations by being a healthy eater and quickly gaining weight. She transformed into a robust and well-rounded black bear. On November 9, 2015, the Rehabilitation Center celebrated the release of Nolly and three other bear companions back into their natural forest habitat. This marked the successful culmination of the center's mission with Nolly, Marvin, Carter, and Sola, as they were all returned to the wild. The Rehabilitation Center expressed their joy and fulfillment on their Facebook page, stating that the release of Nolly and her fellow cubs was the ultimate goal they had been working toward since the day the cubs arrived. They proudly announced that the cubs had grown into large and healthy individuals, 
with weights ranging from 77 to 97 pounds. The center extended their wishes for a long and happy life for the bears in their natural habitat. To enhance Nolly's chances of survival and monitor her movements, the Appalachian Bear Rescue fitted her with a radio collar and identifiable ear tags. Unsurprisingly, Nolly's heartwarming story garnered a large number of fans, even from far-flung places like Australia, Europe, and Asia. This widespread support was evident when ABR auctioned off a felt replica of the little bear, and enthusiastic bids poured in. Ultimately, the replica fetched over $500 for the charity, highlighting once again that Nolly was more than just an ordinary bear, she had captured the hearts of many. There are many crazy things in the world, and people try to explain it with logic or science, but after failing, such events are usually attributed to magic or the power of God. Because it is difficult or impossible to explain them logically, people will attribute them to the category of metaphysics. Many of you must have heard of invisible guardian angels who protect people from possible dangers, and in hindsight, people only remember that some unknown force stopped him at that moment, which made them manage to avoid the terrible thing, a story that we're going to tell today, the main character is a wild animal, a giant brown bear, who is the guardian angel of a married couple. Are you ready? Let's start. This is happening in a place in eastern Siberia where there are a lot of remote villages far away from big cities, if some kind of emergency happens in such a village then it sometimes takes a while for people to reach the city and get the necessary help, although sometimes by the time the ambulance arrives it may be too late, in these villages, where the protagonists of our story live. A young man and his wife are expecting the birth of their first child, and for a long time the husband tries to convince his wife to go to the city and go to the hospital before giving birth. Because her due date was very close, but the woman didn't want to leave the house, she postponed her trip to the hospital until the last minute, and that morning, everything happened so quickly, the woman's water suddenly broke, labor began, and she needed to be there in the hospital, time was passing by quickly. The man quickly carried her out of the house, put her in the car, and then rushed to the city. He kept accelerating, hoping to arrive in time. It was a clear summer day, the road was clear, but the man suddenly noticed a huge thing in front of him, it was lying in the middle of the road, the man slowed down, he drove in front of this strange obstacle, when he realized it was a huge brown bear lay in front of his car. His surprise is palpable. The road in this place is quite narrow and the trees on both sides are very close to the road, so he can't just drive around the bear. The man is angry and wants to chase the bear away but it didn't move, the wife visibly tensed and moaned in pain, the man was confused, he didn't know what to do, then he decided to take a desperate approach, he mustered all his courage, he decided to get out of the car and lead the bear away and after opening the car door, the man picked up a piece of bread in the car and walked towards the bear slowly. It just raised its head, looked at the approaching man, and then put its head down again. The man threw the bread straight into the bear's paws and watched what would happen next, the brown beast reluctantly sniffed at the bread, then very lazily and slowly began to chew it, the man was so angry that his wife was suffering in the car but there was nothing he could do it had been about half an hour, the man wanted to get behind the steering wheel and hit the bear lying on the road, when it suddenly stood up and slowly left the road. The man and his wife were very happy. He immediately started the car and continued driving. At the next turn, a mile away from where the bear was lying in the road, he had to stop again and the man looked ahead and couldn't help crying. Just around the corner half an hour ago, there was a huge accident there, a heavy truck with a trailer came towards them, it lost control, overturned, the truck driver and his passengers died on the spot, if the couple hadn't been forced to stop by the bear lying in the middle of the road, then there is a good chance that their car will fall under the wheels of this truck and now they will die too, now. The person realizes why the bear is blocking their way and not letting them go. It saved them from the accident, but how could a wild bear have foreseen the accident? What's more, why did he want to save people? The man stood weeping and thanked from the bottom of his heart his savior, whom he sincerely believed was his guardian angel who appeared to him in the form of a wild bear and protected him and his wife and their unborn baby, soon, an ambulance came here, and his wife gave birth to the baby smoothly. His wife gave birth to him in the ambulance at the scene of the accident, 
after which they were taken to the municipal hospital where they received all the necessary medical care, who knows if the bear hadn't been in his way that day, it might have been what tragedy happened. He has been thankful for the bear all his life. Friends, if you are suddenly late for something, and all kinds of obstacles appear in front of you, just try to stop and think, do you really need to get there so fast? Or is there something your guardian angel wants you to keep away? Nothing in our life happens by accident, which makes us need to pay more attention to the signs of fate, maybe this can protect us from possible misfortune, what do you think about this? Share your opinion in the comments. There are many mysterious phenomena in the world that are often unexplained from a scientific point of view, in which case, people either blindly believe in the existence of supernatural forces, or try to find a reasonable explanation, and these stories are told repeatedly over time, evolved into myths and legends, however, it is up to each of us to believe these stories or not. The following story happened in a dense tiger forest in the Far East. Once, a businessman from the area came there with his eight-year-old son. It was a business trip, but he took his son with him because he thought it would be good for him to get some fresh air and see the local nature, but he didn't know what was in store for the little boy. In the early morning, the man left the house for a business meeting, the boy was still sound asleep and his father didn't want to wake him up. He planned to finish his business before lunch and then go for a walk in the forest with his son, they would go home in the evening, but when the man came home in the afternoon, he found that the boy was not at home and no one knew where he was. The man had the whole village come to help find his son, and everyone joined in the search for the missing boy. The forest was searched carefully, but there were no traces of his child anywhere. A few days later, local rangers found the boy in an abandoned wolf den. The boy was so frightened and exhausted that he wouldn't eat or drink for several days. When the rangers pulled him out, the boy held him tightly. For some minutes he could neither cry nor speak, only quickly whispered strange words when he finally realized that he was safe, that the big bear, the wolf, the dreadful, had been driven away. To others, it sounds like nonsense. But the ranger understood right away, he looked the boy straight in the eyes and said don't tell anyone what he saw, when the man carried the boy out of the forest the father burst into tears of joy, he didn't know how to thank his son's savior but the ranger handed him the child and said he didn't need anything, and he was soon on his way. The boy didn't listen to the ranger, he told his father everything. That morning he woke up alone at home thinking his father hadn't taken him into the forest, the boy had a quick breakfast and went to find his father, entering the forest he soon realized he was lost, he had run for a long time and shouted for help, but no one answered, and then he fell into a deep hole, unable to get out by himself. He was very scared, then he saw a huge bear by the side of the pit, he went to the side of the pit, sniffed the boy, and sat on the side of the pit, at night, the wolves were howling nearby, their howling was so close and scary, but the bear didn't leave his side, and when the wolves got very close, the bear chased them all away, and he sat next to the boy until the rangers found him. But the ranger himself said he didn't see any bears, and then the locals said they knew what bear the boy was talking about, and it turned out that years ago, poachers came here and they killed animals with wanton and no remorse, the only people who spoke out against them were local foresters, and at one point poachers were hunting a mother bear and her cubs. They shot the poor animal for a long time and the cub started to lag behind its mother noticeably. Foresters heard the gunshots and rushed to rescue the cub. Unfortunately, the mother was shot beyond repair, but the forester protected the cub with his body, and the cub managed to escape, but the forester was killed. After that, strange things started happening there. Three years later the locals started seeing a huge brown bear in the forest, it was picking up poachers one by one in the forest and tearing them to pieces, it didn't touch any of the locals, and it's actually still there help them, protect them, so people think that the spirit of the forester went into the body of the cub, the bear he sacrificed himself to protect. Now it roams the forest, protecting it from poachers, and people say it was the bear that protected the little boy from the beast until the rangers found him. The ranger himself always avoided talking about the bear, Deep down he was afraid that his popularity would bring new poachers here who might want to kill him, so he tried to stop those conversations and protect the bear from any potentially dangerous. It's such an unusual story that it's hard to believe it's true. 
But still, it taught us a lot, and that's the story for today, my friends, if you like this story, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Today, we have an amazing story about a friendship between a bear and a man. At the Irish Kovo airfield in the Kaluga region of Russia, there lives an unusual inhabitant named Mansur, also known as the Air Bear. Three years ago, a little bear cub unexpectedly appeared on the runway. As the pilots joked, he came to look at the planes and stayed forever. Mansur grew up at the airport, waking up and falling asleep to the sounds of planes taking off. Step ladders and tools became his playground, and he would climb on them for hours. Climbing up ladders, he often got into airplanes. As this bear cub grew up around the airfield and airplanes, everyone called him the Air Bear. He was a wonderful and kind cub who loved to play, eat well, and bask blissfully in the sun. The bear became everybody's pet, all the highlights on the airfield knew him and liked him. People came to hug him, shake his paw, or pat his head. A husky dog belonging to one of the pilots became his friend. One of the pilots, named Andrei Ivanov, became the bear's best friend. He took care of the cub as if he were his father. The young man understood the difficult science of bringing up a bear outside of the wild, from what bears eat to where they live. Andre says, we understood that for now, he was young, but time would pass quickly, and we should be ready for the fact that the place for a grown bear is in the forest. But to leave Mansur in the forest right now when he is still little would mean certain death for him. We couldn't do that. At that age, he would not have found food for himself. The people at the airfield were looking for a solution, and they got to know the Pozidno family. They were amazing people who were engaged in the rehabilitation of orphaned cubs, teaching them survival skills before releasing them into the forest. But by the time they contacted them, too much time had passed. Mansur had lived among people for a long time, and he had lost his basic instincts for protecting himself in the wild. There were already enough bears in the zoos of the country. But while contacting them, they found Virasov Chinya, an employee of the Moscow Zoo who was also involved in aviation. She told the pilots about a special diet for the bear. Also, while contacting the zoos, the pilots found another person who promised to take the animal to a nature reservation area and assured that Mansur would live happily there. The pilots decided that it would be better for Mansur, but they were sad about that fact. However, it turned out that Andre and his colleagues did not like the people who came to take the bear. The visitors quickly put Mansur into a cage and drove away. At the first opportunity, Andre and his colleagues decided to come and see Mansur, but they weren't able to as the people who had taken the bear refused to meet. So, the pilots conducted an investigation and realized that their good-natured Mansur was at a hunting training center. The men went to rescue their friend. Mansur's roar was heard even at the entrance of the hunting center. The little bear was behaving frantically inside the iron bars of the cage. The pilots called the beast by name, and he stopped in surprise. When the cage was opened, Mansur quickly jumped into Andre's arms and joyfully greeted the other men, licking their hands and grabbing their legs. The well-mannered, contented, and good-natured beast even said goodbye to the owner of the station, standing on his hind legs as if he wanted to say, I am not angry with you. The appearance of the bear was awful, his fur was stained and falling out. They took him to bathe, and upon seeing the pond, the bear joyfully jumped into the water. He loved swimming very much. A few minutes later, he was sitting quietly in the car, sticking his nose to the car window and looking at the highway. After this happened, the pilots decided not to give Mansur to anybody. They even took him to a larger airport. The pilots carefully studied the methods of keeping bears outside the wild, with expert support and advice. Andre studied the basics of animal psychology. They fenced in a large territory and built an enclosure through donations for Mansur. People from all over the world gave donations to help keep the bear. He lives in a spacious area where he can play and have plenty of fun. He can do what he loves and looks like a child or a puppy. Experts say that the best way to educate is not to shout or use strength, but to punish by lack of attention. 
Andre says that if Mansoor is making a fuss or misbehaving, it is enough to talk to him in a displeased tone and leave him alone for an hour. Then he comes to you with a guilty look, takes your hand, and wants you to stroke him. A brown bear living in the central part of Russia has a vegetarian diet. It includes roots, grass, vegetables, oats, nuts, and berries. He also eats ants and eggs occasionally. However, the friendly bear has refused raw fish and meat. He likes meat pies or a Russian dish called borscht but does not enjoy raw meat. He loves seeds, nuts, bread, corn, and cracked hazelnuts and walnuts. As for berries, he prefers cranberries and ash berries. He also enjoys watermelons, tomatoes, bananas, oranges, grapefruits, lemons, beets, potato skins, honeycomb, cottage cheese, sour cream, and milk. Over three years, the bear has never shown aggression towards people. Even when he was sick or had a toothache, there were no signs of aggression. The only violent behavior was directed at metal rods and bars, and it could occur when his food disappeared too quickly. However, such negative changes in his mood were observed only in his first year of life. In the second and third years, it did not happen. When the bear is hungry, he becomes more excited while looking for food, but it is not aggression. According to the methods of keeping wild animals, Andre tries to give the bear maximum freedom. They usually provide more food than the bear can eat, so he is not greedy for food. He eats only as much as he needs. While eating, he allows Andre to take food from his bowl or even from his mouth without showing any aggression. Bears are very strong creatures. The physical strength of a one-and-a-half-year-old bear is comparable to that of a full-grown, strong man. By the third year of his life, Mansur weighed over 90 pounds and stood six-and-a-half feet tall. At the same time, the bear perfectly understands not to use his full power while playing and gently touches people's clothes with his teeth or paws. People should never attempt to fight with a bear in its third year of life because it uses its weight during a fight, shifting it onto the opponent, which exhausts them more than the struggle itself. When communicating with any animal, especially a bear, it is very important to pay attention to your own psychological state. If you are not in a good mood, feeling depressed, or sad, do not go into the bear's enclosure as your mood will affect the bear's behavior. The bear has a sense of compassion, but if you are mentally weak, the bear will control the situation, not the person, and this is not acceptable because then it stops respecting you. Andre says that when keeping a bear, you also have to understand whether he wants to communicate with you at that moment or not. You should not be pushy, as this will only cause irritation for the bear. In nature, animals compete and only the strong and lucky ones survive. When animals are in danger, their parents will protect them. With the blessing of their parents, they can grow up safely. Whether it is animals or humans, their parents always pay the most. What would they do if their parents are not around or are in distress in times of crisis? There was a group of cute snowy owl hatchlings all disappeared overnight, so that mother snowy owl was in anxious search. The ultimate truth shocked everyone. There are many white-furred animals in cold areas at high latitudes and high altitudes, which help them to escape from attacks. There was a species of owl that lived in such areas and the white color of its body was very beautiful. There are more than 130 species of owls, and they are all called owls because their heads are similar to a cat. The most obvious thing about snowy owls and other owls is that their feathers are different in color, other owls have black-brown, brown, and gray-brown feathers, while snowy owls are white and look very cute, like an elf. One day in winter, a man found a very beautiful animal while swimming in the river, which was a white owl. However, the owl was actually a snowy owl. The man kept approaching it, but it didn't fly away and was probably injured. The man quickly asked for help from the Forestry and Grass Bureau because the snowy owl is a key protected animal, so he wanted to rescue it in time. It probably had food poisoning, so it didn't get scared or fly away. They needed to examine this snowy owl in detail to know what happened. Under the care of the relevant animal protection agencies, that snowy owl soon recovered its health.
Considering that wild animals should be returned to nature, they decided to release it. However, in order to check the health condition of the snowy owl, the staff installed a locator on it. In May, the snowy owl came back and started to marry and have babies, which every snowy owl must go through. The snowy owl's favorite food was lemmings, and it occasionally preys on rabbits, gulls and ducks. During his study of that snowy owl, American biologist Holt discovered that snowy owls need 500 grams of food per day to survive in the Arctic and that they are more likely to hunt lemmings. Snowy owl reproduction is highly dependent on the amount of food available, Holt said, adding that snowy owls only lay an egg about every two days, and that they may lay up to 12 eggs when food is in good supply. During egg incubation, male snowy owls are responsible for hunting and returning lemmings as food. The snowy owl that was released at the time was already married. The pair dug a hole on the slope to make a nest and hatched two babies, one named Mike and one named Bob. The mother snowy owl kept watch over them and sometimes stood on the hillside looking into the distance, as if waiting for the father snowy owl to return. As long as the father came back, they would have food. After a long time, the father did not come back, so the mother decided to venture out to hunt for food. It pecked the two snowy owl hatchlings and told them to wait at home. After the mother snowy owl left, the two snowy owl hatchlings were whimpering in the nest. Mike was stronger and Bob was weaker, and before long they were on their backs in the nest. Not long after the mother left, a ferret emerged from the other side of the hill and saw the two snowy owl hatchlings. After watching for a while, it did not see the great snowy owl, so it crept forward. Mike sensed the danger, so it rushed to lie down in the grass, not daring to make a sound. Bob did its best to follow Mike, although it was weak. They hid quietly in the grass and thus escaped the ferret's attack. The mother snowy owl came back and found them all gone, so it hovered in mid-air for a long time before finding them in the grass. Luckily, the two snowy owl hatchlings were smart enough to escape the attack and survive. It took a few days for the father to return and bring food. They were finally reunited. Despite their weakness, they were able to defend themselves, which was astonishing. Something like this also happened in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. People who graze in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia are no stranger to wolves. They are small, about the size of a mastiff, weighing about 20 to 30 kilograms, and look very cunning. They are thin and run fast. A herder's house in Xinha County, Inner Mongolia, was attacked by wolves. At that time, a mother cow and a calf were kept in a spacious cow pen. The calf had just been born for three days and was snuggled up to the cow. The cow was lying on the ground, looking lazy. A skinny wolf sneaked into the pen and walked around them, watching them all the time. As it walked, it looked as if it was looking for an opportunity. The wolf was excited to see the calf and tried to capture it. However, since the large cow was right next to it, it was afraid to go forward. After several attempts, it retreated. It is reasonable to say that cows love their children very much and once they perceive danger, they will go to protect them. However, the cow had been lying calmly on the ground, not moving. Did it mistake that for a dog? Since the wolf ran into the cattle pen alone and without a companion, it was most likely very hungry and wanted to take the risk to hunt for food, or perhaps there were several wolf cubs waiting for it in the den. The wolf did not dare to attack the calf rashly, but it was unwilling to leave, so it kept looking for opportunities in the cattle pen. At that time, the atmosphere was stagnant, and the wolf was unwilling to leave because there was no food, while the cow was still lying peacefully on the ground. The calf could not resist, and when the wolf tried again in front of it, it slowly stood up and called out. It stepped forward and tried to chase the wolf away. The calf was not afraid of the tiger or the wolf and it again took a step forward, while the wolf immediately stepped back. At the same time, the cow stood up and went to the calf to protect it. After that, the wolf did not dare to stay and turned around and fled. When their owner saw the scene from the surveillance, he immediately took a flashlight and saw the cow and the calf standing alertly. The calf was safe and was not hurt by the wolf. 
No matter what animals they were, they were certainly the cutest when they were little. Not only were they cute, but they also had the ability to learn and adapt quickly, which is simply astounding. Humans need to be taken care of after they are born, yet animals are very independent or they are easily outgrown. Humans generally learn to walk when they are one year old, but many herbivorous animals, such as goats and antelopes, learn to walk 30 minutes after birth. Animals on land have to learn to walk while animals in water have to learn to swim as soon as possible. Animals need to be equipped with many skills at birth, so we should not underestimate them. Only if they are smart enough to survive safely in nature.